reservoir and it's beautiful sunny day here. We're in Wyoming just north of the Colorado border. You can see our campground is right back there up on that hill. We're just across the lake here and there's a really nice beachy area here and the kids are out floating around enjoying the nice water. The water is crystal clear. <laughs> what do you have there? Butterfly. That's pretty cool. How did you catch that? My, um, put tea on my finger. Oh look, another like one's shot. I'm the butterfly whisperer. Well the butterfly was on her toe at first and I don't know why it wanted to be on her toe. But... Give me more tea, give me more tea. There's well, another one. What? Where do you want me to put it? On my finger. <laughs> No, I didn't like it. You know, I just, you just scared it. You having fun? No. The water's cold? Way cold. If I can fly, I'll be out there. I'll help. Now she's got a butterfly and a moth. I think it's biting. It's biting you? Yeah. It thinks I have food. I have a friend as well. I don't even have anything on my finger that I'm aware of. It's fun to look at it up close. I didn't steal it, it came to me. Where'd it go? Oh, it's gonna get blown away. I ran out of sugar. <laughs> He's just sitting there singing. What song are you singing, Nolan? Just one you made up? It's freezing. Looks like you're doing pretty well. Brian says he's gonna be brave and jump in. Do not tip her over. Don't tip her over when you jump. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. This is her first time rowing. How difficult is that, Kylie? What? Is that really difficult? Yes. It's way easier when it was just rolling. <laughs> Why are we doing something else?
So one of the newest upgrades we've done in the camper since our last trip and we've got to enjoy using this trip is we put a power inverter in to run off our solar panels. I also installed a new 180 watt solar panel along with the 200 we had before. So we have about 400 watts total now. And I installed this 1500 watt inverter under here. So now we're able to run everything, the microwave, uh, you'll soon see here, Lauren uses it for her sewing machine and I've used the shop back with it. Um, it charges all our devices. Um, we've used the toaster and coffee maker. So out here in our campsite here in Wyoming, we're completely off the grid, no electrical hookups whatsoever, but we're still able to use most of our devices and it's really great. And these kinds of primitive campsites are much cheaper than ones with full hookups. Here's a closer look at the inverter right here. I hooked it directly into the battery, which is just to the front of the camper, right on the other side of this wall. And the shorter you run from the battery, the better it is. And I also rigged up this cord that runs to this electrical box here. And I have a nice permanent outlet that we can use. So that way it's a little bit neater than having to go run it under this bench back there. We also have this multi-device charger that Lauren found on Amazon, which we hook into the inverter. And it's great because we can charge all of our kids' tablets and our phones and everything all at once. And that's a really good device that we picked up. I'm really glad Brian installed the inverter for a lot of reasons, but also it allowed me to bring my sewing machine, which seems a little odd maybe. Um, but I started making masks. Um, right before we left and they were selling pretty well and I knew I would have quite a bit of downtime on this trip So I asked if I could bring my sewing machine and he actually laughed at me <laughs> At first because it sounds funny, but anyways, it's really fun to be able to sew out here actually and the sewing machine works great And when do you get a view like that to sew with? Exactly, yeah I bought a little house thing for toys you made a little house yeah. out of the dirt here? Yeah. Well, that's neat. That's a fan. We made a homemade pizza for dinner tonight. It's Good. Friday nights are usually our pizza night, and we carry on the tradition when we're camping, too. This is a really neat site we have here. We're actually able to have a fire, which we weren't in Colorado, and we're kind of just perched up on top of a a hill and it's pretty much a 360 degree view all the way around. There's the lake. What do you think of this site, Nolan? Cool. What's your favorite part about it? The view and stuff. The view. The view. Do you like the lake? Yeah. But cold. It's cold. You can have, I want it swim in, so and it was really cold. For those of you watching this video that aren't maybe from out west or familiar with traveling in the west, you might have seen in the background quite a few dead trees. As you can see right behind me here, those are from pine beetles. They've had a huge infestation and problem with them in the past. 15, 20 years or so, and they've killed a large portion of the, the ponderosa pines and even the Colorado spruces that are in the forests around here. I guess because the winters haven't been quite as harsh as they used to be, the pine beetles aren't dying in numbers that they used to, so the infestation has been worse. Um, not all the trees die, I guess only the only the most mature trees die, so you can see there's smaller ones underneath that are still living, so once the infestation ends, those smaller trees will grow up and they'll replace the older ones that had died from the pine beetles, and the forest will return, it's just going to take a while.
We are about packed up and ready to leave Hog Park Reservoir. It's a very pretty area back here and there's a nice lake and we had some fun out there on our kayak and some uh, floaty tubes that we had. Uh, there really isn't much hiking around here that we've been able to find, at least close to this area. It's definitely a great place to come if you like water activity though. There's a great lake and it's nice and remote and quiet. It is down a 20 mile dirt road and as you'll probably have seen already in this video, we had quite the adventure trying to find the right road to even get here, but we're ready to head out on our way. We're not quite sure where we're heading, but we're going to head somewhere towards Laramie and see what there is to do over in that area. It is really cool. And Nolan played with his Paw Patrol figurines in them, didn't, didn't he? Yeah. Like they were little houses. Yeah. It's fun. So we've come out to the main highway and this is where we should have turned originally when we first went back to that campground three days ago. We're not really sure how we messed up. Well, we, our G, we turned where our GPS told us to. Upon looking further at the map, it was pretty clear where the GPS had taken us astray. Instead of taking the highway out of encampment, we started right off on a dirt road out of town, and that's what led us on that crazy off-road path where we almost didn't make it out of. If we would have kept going on the highway, we eventually would have got to the road that goes to Hog Park Reservoir and is definitely much more navigable with an RV in tow. So, thanks to Google, we found this place in Saratoga, Wyoming. And there's some natural hot springs here we're gonna check out. How does it feel? It's hot. It's hot. It is, it's like a hot summer here. Crazy. How's it feel in here, Nolan? Hot. Hot. How is it? Nice and warm and relaxing. Are you in the hottest pool? Yes, I'm so hot. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, be careful. Don't sprain an ankle. There's a little pool in here that's they've built walls around and it's 
pretty hot. Like, makes my skin sting. Lauren doesn't want to get in and try it out. Does it feel pretty hot? Saratoga, and there's a pier just chilling on the middle of the street. Oh my, that's so funny. He's eating their flowers. Beautiful rainbow over the mountains. Some pronghorns with their little babies out there. I didn't actually tape me repairing this, but what happened is uh, the umbilical from the car to the camper somehow got pinched and totally tore it in half and cut all the wires. So luckily the guy that's a neighbor here at this RV park had some spare wire junctions that I used to repair it and I taped it back up and it, we tested it out and it looks like it's going to work at least enough to get us home hopefully and I'll probably have to get a new umbilical at some point. This trip has been quite crazy when it comes to mishaps and this just adds to the list. So we're having some issues with our deadbolt on our uh, lock on our door and I'm taking it apart to see if I can get fixed. Yeah because we weren't able to lock our camper at all just now. So inside is a whole family of stink bugs or something I'm not really sure but that definitely can't be helping the situation with this door. So here I have the lock completely disassembled and this piece right here was just laying loose in there and if you see I sticks in there like that and that is what controls the deadbolt so I'm hoping now that I have that put back in place our deadbolt will work properly. So I've got it all put back together now and as you can see the deadbolt right here works. That latch works, it worked before, but the latch works too. And something that didn't work before is the deadbolt did not operate by the key. And now it operates by the key, so that's great. And was that all because of stink bugs? I don't know what was going on, but something came loose in there. Maybe just bumping around over time or yeah. who knows what, but it all works now, so. Awesome. Safe again. <laughs>